Hey everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. On today's podcast, we are talking about not just stepping out of your comfort zone, but running out of your comfort zone and completing a Disney run. And in honor of today's show, I am wearing my Disney run jacket that I got when I did the Princess Disney Princess run. I don't know how many years ago, but it's been a while. And on the podcast with me today is special guest Heather Jurgensen. She is a running coach, a YouTube creator, and a podcast host of Runners Without Limits podcast. Heather can be found on YouTube at Heather Jurgensen, Instagram at Coach Heather J, and Facebook with Runners Without Limits. And all her tags will be on the show notes over at Shape It Up Fitness. So welcome, Heather, to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to talk Run Disney because at this point, like I just missed a Run Disney weekend because it just got canceled. Oh, so no. I'm just, I'm, I, I will talk Run Disney all day long. So <laughs> it's going to be a fun day. So which one did you miss? Was it the Star Wars one? Star Wars was supposed to be this past weekend, the weekend of April 19th. Oh. And uh, I was signed up to do all three of them. It's my favorite weekend. And um, so they canceled that. But I celebrated anyway. I ran them virtually. I dressed up in my neighborhood. It was just it oh, was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> was it just you in a Star Wars costume running around? It really was. And, you know, I was getting these looks like people were like, oh, I love the outfit. <laughs> yeah. Do they know who you are? And they're like, oh, yeah, that's Heather. It's okay. <laughs> No, it's so funny because I think people were just like, oh, she's wearing a sparkle skirt. She's just dressing up for her run. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's so much more than that. <laughs> so what did you dress up as or who? So I um, had three different characters. One of them was Ahsoka Tano, who is from the Clone Wars TV series. Um, Harrison Dula from the Rebels TV series. You want to talk Star Wars? You're going to get a lot of geekdom from me. So careful okay. what you ask for. Um, <laughs> And then the half marathon, I was Sabine Wren, also from Rebels. So I had the sparkle athletic skirts on and I was all dressed up and I even wore ears around my house all weekend because I was missing Disney. So. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we are big Star Wars fans here, but just judging from the three characters you mentioned, I need to um, upgrade my <laughs> my level of Star Wars. <laughs> for sure. I, I can get you covered. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, my daughter, um, Mackenzie, she is 13, and she wants to do the um, Star Wars race at Disney, and I'm like, anytime, let's let's do this. <laughs> it's not this year. Hopefully it's not next this year. year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I might actually have to train for that, but... <laughs> so, for... Um, I actually met you, I don't know how many years it's been, it's, I, I want to say like three or four years ago, it seems like time is flying, but I met you through a YouTube challenge. Yeah. that we did, we both signed up for. And um, I don't know if you know Christy Lingo, but I had her on the podcast earlier in the year. And she was one of the people that I had met and managed to stay in touch with, I think. And there's one other person and everybody else has fallen <laughs> off right. in, yeah, in the ethernet. But um, yeah, and, and I'm actually shocked that we haven't run into each other at Disney at some point. I know, I know. It's funny, you know, I want to say it's been since 2016 was one of the last times I did that vlog every day challenge, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're posting a video every single day and it becomes this community for that month and we're supporting each other. And that's how I think we found each other. And it was, yeah. I haven't done that in a long time. That, that was a different, <laughs> different time. Different realm, yeah. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> It's a different mindset to be able to get a video up every day. Yes, that, that is very true. Very true. All right. So tell me a little bit how you got started. Uh, with my fitness journey, uh, you know, a lot of this Runners Without Limits and, and the YouTube channel and all of that came out of being a novice athlete. Uh, we call them adult onset runners, right? Because we, you know, we started, we didn't like running in, in high school and, you know, running is my, is my sports punishment and all of this stuff. So once I got out of college, I wanted to do something that had a goal and not just fitness for fitness sake. Mm -hmm. So I started in triathlon because I was a lifelong swimmer and I thought, well, the swimming part is easy for me where it's not with a lot of other triathletes. Um, so the bike and the run, uh, I started in a women's specific triathlon and I just kept building up over the course of the next few years. And I finished out with a 
with a full distance Ironman triathlon. Oh, wow. And in the middle of that training cycle, it's high volume, a lot of endurance, and just you're out there forever. It's part-time job. Yes. <laughs> uh, I decided I needed to do something that was fun on the back end of this. And that's when I found Run Disney. So I started signing up for Run Disney events and my wallet hasn't been the same since. So that's been a different thing. Um, but from there, I started discovering because of this triathlon to Ironman journey and then jumping into running, because it was almost starting off, starting over as a runner, I learned a lot from triathlon that I could take into this. And so I, le- I already made a bunch of mistakes and I brought that knowledge into running. And I found myself answering other people's questions, these novice runners questions about what do you do when this happens? You know, how, how do you find your right shoes? How do you, what does tempo pace mean and all of this stuff? So from there, I'm like, I actually can share the mistakes I've made and the lessons I've learned along the way and become a running coach. So I did that a couple of years ago after I finished a few run Disney events and I'm, you know, still doing uh, running events for time, not just for fun, but running events for time as well. And so now I've kind of gathered this tribe around me that is, you know, they're, they're just so supportive and they're finding that the mistakes I've made, they're like, oh, okay, now I get it. Now I understand yeah. what, what all of this means. So that's kind of the very short thumbnail sketch <laughs> of my journey. <laughs> now, how many years have you been doing Run Disney? Uh, Run Disney, my first Run Disney was November of 2015. And that was the uh, Avengers Half Marathon, Superheroes Half Marathon out oh, at cool. Disneyland when they still had uh, those races out there. So oh, they, they don't do races out there anymore. They don't in 2017, oh. they shut those down for a variety of reasons. Um, not the least of which construction, they put them on hiatus, but, uh, it, unfortunately we don't know when those are coming back. Oh. We're, we're all holding out hope because they were great races. But. I was going to say, cause, um, there's not a lot of space at Disneyland. Like you'd really have to be running through the town. Yeah. A lot yeah. Of so with the 5k and the 10k, you can stay on property, but mm. on the half marathon, you are going out into Anaheim and yeah. you get to run through angel stadium and, and oh, stuff cool. like that, which is a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, they, they shut those down. I did the last one. Uh, it was the same, uh, superhero weekend in 2017. Mm. Uh, so that was the last race that they had there. It seems like forever ago now. I know. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how time just starts <laughs> Picking up, like, I'm like, you know, I, I was thinking about when I graduated high school and I was like, wait a minute, that was a long, <laughs> that was a long time ago. ago. <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> so what makes Run Disney community um, different from the other running communities that you have experienced? I think because the running community, and I, and I discovered this from, you know, again, through my journey, the women's specific triathlon was super supportive. Like everybody, you know, you're passing each other and everybody's like high five in and, mm-hmm. you know, this very supportive nature that kind of comes along with the women's tribe, right? Then you get up into the co-ed and more competitive longer distances and it does have that kind of intimidation feel to it. Um, from there, a lot of races, especially the longer distance ones, have that kind of competitive a little edge to it, right? Yeah a little bit I don't want to say more serious because Mm -hmm. it's all serious it can be serious whether you know depending on your take on it but run Disney is so different because it's not just it's it's more Disney fans Mm. finding a way to be fit right and this is where I I love that it's kind of the we call it the gateway drug that (laughs) You do, you do one run Disney event and all of a sudden you're hooked and you have to kind of work for it, um, especially for those longer distances. The half marathon is, is a really good example that, well, okay, um, if I'm going to do this, then I probably need to get out and get moving. And it's for Disney's sake and I'm going to stop for characters and, and I'm going to have a good time right. and I'm going to run with friends. But then it becomes this, okay, now... I'm finding that I'm feeling better. I'm, be, I'm, I'm feeling stronger. I have, I want to do more. 
with myself. I want to further this journey. And so these people that find run Disney and, and kind of get hooked on it that way, they start looking for their local races. Mm. These people who probably would never have started running or at least not in this way. They find run Disney, they find the fun way to do it and they get inspired by that. And then they want to do more and then they want to do more and then push themselves farther and, and make themselves stronger. And that's where I love the run Disney community. And I just, I love seeing these people have those aha moments. Like, wait, I just did that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of first timers, a lot of first time, any, any one of those distances, but like a lot of first time marathoners will be at that January event. And it's like, I'm at, (laughs) I'm at the finish line, just cheering them on like this. Keep going. This is amazing. You guys, guess what? You just finished a marathon. Right. And when they cross that finish line, they, they just look at themselves like, I can't believe I just did this. <laughs> yeah. And oh my gosh, the, and it opens doors. Yeah. And these are, you know, just like me, they're the, el- the adult onset runners that like, I didn't think, I thought my time had passed. Right. But no, you you're still just got getting started. More in you. Yeah. <laughs> you're just getting started. So you're um, welcome. Your wallet's never going to be. Yeah. Started. Right. <laughs> um, I know I, I am a big Disney fan, as you know, and I always find that like, you know, Disney is probably considered one of the best as far as marketing oh, yeah. and from a business aspect, you know, I, as you're talking about how the Disney runs, you know, they make you feel good. I mean, that is like Disney's motto for everything. And it's like the more magic they can sprinkle on you, the more you want to come back, which yeah. It's such an awesome marketing tactic. Yeah. It's like, but um, when we did the Disney run, my sister was the one that was actually like, hey, do you want to do this? Now, I am not a runner. So growing up, I was a ballet dancer and we were told never to run. Like it was bad for our knees and our feet. Very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And because, it, you know, if you're familiar with ballet, you're always kind of turned out and we kind of walk like ducks. Mm-hmm. We would run like ducks. So no wonder why your knees would bother you. So when she told me, she was like, do you want to do this run? And I was like, I don't really like running, but whatever. And this was not that long ago. So I'm almost 47. So I was probably maybe 44, I think. 45. Yeah. yeah. And um, I remember training for it and my feet, I had all kinds of problems with my feet, like plantar fasciitis and all this stuff. And, but when we got down there, it was a 10 K race and um, you know, we were all excited about wearing tutus because it was a princess run. And everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it comes with territory. It's almost a requirement. Exactly. So, like, I, there's no way I was showing up in just regular workout clothes. <laughs> but um, like you were saying, like when I finished that, and it was a 10K, when I finished, I was like, because in my brain, I was like, there's no, I'm going to really have a struggle with 10K. And because I wasn't a runner and still not a runner. But um, when I finished that, I crossed the finish line. I was like, oh should have signed up for the half marathon. Like I, it was like, I had so much more left in me. And I think, um, you know, like you were saying, whether you do the 5k, the 10k or the whole shebang, you know, pushing yourself out of that comfort zone and just seeing what you're capable of doing. Oh, yeah. And even if sometimes you don't like, I know there were a lot of people that walked and that's totally fine. Like just the fact that you showed up, that's, that's good. You know, we call race day, your victory lap right? Mm. You know, it, it become, it, it's, it's something that you work hard, especially for when, when we get into marathon weekend and it's, it's the one weekend in January where you have the marathon, but there are three events that involve the marathon. There's the standalone 26.2. Then you have the goofy challenge, which is the half one day and the full the next day. So mm. that's, yeah. Yeah. And then you have the dopey <laughs> challenge, which is the 5k, the 10k, the half right. marathon, and the full marathon. Mm-hmm. And you know, folks will sign up for this at having maybe never run. And so they just want to get to that point. It is that inspiration to get them out and get them moving. Right. And so no matter what happens on race day, and I say this a lot on my channel and, and on the podcast, it's like, no matter what happens on race day, because anything could happen, right? Mm-hmm. Anything can happen on race day. You could have lousy weather, mm-hmm. race could get canceled, whatever. That day is your victory lap yeah. because you've put in so much work you've made the daily decision to do something good for yourself and that's where 
I, you know, Disney especially is such a celebration because mm -hmm. you're running along, you get to run up Main Street for a couple of these, you know, you, you turn the corner, you're running up Main Street and there's the castle, castle. and I've done mm -hmm. it probably half a dozen times and it makes me cry every time. <laughs> and it's like you have fun character stops and you have, you know, you get to stop and, you know, get your picture taken with a Disney princess. You've seen it. Yeah. Um, it, you know, and it just, it just becomes... the fact that you're a Disney, you know, like <laughs> you get to go to Disney to, to run. <laughs> it's like not a lot of other races can actually say that. So no, right. It's right. <laughs> So it just becomes, it becomes that celebration of I'm doing something good for myself. And that's why I love it. And Disney caters to uh, that novice runner. Yeah. Um, even the people that like finish the race that mm -hmm. they're at the back, they start last, they finish last. Mm. They're called the balloon ladies. They yes. carry balloons. Okay. Yes. I mean, it's just this. The pacers. <laughs> 26.2 mile street party. So <laughs> it's really a lot of fun. Yeah. I think yeah. it's funny that the big marathon, the two big medals are the dopey and the goofy. Yes. <laughs> like you really have to question yeah. what you're doing. <laughs> there are multiple times throughout the training, not just for, not just for goofy or dopey where you question a lot of your life's decisions. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I think that's really part of picking a goal and whether it's mm -hmm. running, whether it's a fitness competition or whether, you know, it's something, what everybody else would consider a smaller goal, like just the process, you learn more about yourself going through the process than you actually do at the, yeah, at the goal and at the event. So, yeah. Yeah. It's that it's habit development. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's getting up every day and saying, okay, I have, you know, if you're following a training plan, um, which is one of the things that I always encourage is mm -hmm. like, have a plan, go into the next two to five months with knowing a general idea of what you've got going on for the next, yeah. you know, yeah. several months. And then you can decide, okay, every morning I have to make a new decision. Yeah. You don't have to look at the whole thing. Just say every morning, I'm going to make a new decision. I'm going to get up and have my shoes laid out the night before. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to get out. And I'm going to go. Yeah. And it just develops this habit. And once you've done that for a few months, you kind of find a groove. And then you start to, you know, if something happens and you have to miss a few days, you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I really need to go running just for myself, just for my health. I know it's good for me. And this is what I want. Yeah. So it, it's just... I love how Disney has created this event for brand new runners and they really do cater to that fun aspect of it. It's like, it's just this big distraction. It's like you're running. Right. But you're having a great hurts, time doing but... it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, to your point though, I think that's why coaches are so important. I mean, I think you have to get the right coach, but depending on what you're doing, you know, it, it, especially if you're a newbie and you're not sure what, you should be doing. Yes, you can print something out off online, but I think there's something different about like, you know, having you as a coach or working, you know, I have clients that come to me and work through just their fitness journey, that kind of thing. And um, the other, I know I always tell my clients, um, like you were saying about the daily routine is if you've ever gone skiing, snow skiing, they always teach you to only look about six to 10 feet ahead of you because that's right. all you need to be concerned about. <laughs> and it's the right. same thing when you're trying to go for a goal, you know, it's fine to have that end result, but only taking one day at a time or even one hour at a time is sometimes the way you have to do it and get there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a thing that um, I have a couple of friends who are coaches as well. And we like to say that we're advocating for the middle to the back of the pack mm. because everyone deserves a coach. Every yeah. single one deserves a coach. And especially, I think, and like you said, those novices, those brand new to the sport, they don't know what they don't know. Right. And it's hard. It's hard to learn and make those mistakes. And sometimes you do have to fall to get back up again. Mm -hmm. But when you have a coach, you can ask the questions that you need to ask and you can get solid answers. And even if you don't have a coach that you're necessarily paying per se, mm -hmm. there are resources out there and social media is great for this too, right? That you can ask the question, what do I do? You know, uh, how do I get a good pair of shoes? Mm -hmm. And I can 
I can explain this is, this is the process by which you do that. Or how do I develop a training plan? Or I miss this run, what do I do? And the nice thing is, is that when you have a voice of reason or someone with more experience that has made these mistakes or knows the answer, it helps demystify the journey, mm -hmm. right? It helps right. you say, okay, I can let this go and just focus, like you said, on the next six feet in front of me. What is mm -hmm. happening today? What is happening tomorrow? Not what's happening, you know, in, in September when I have no control over that. Right. So you're taking it one day at a time. And I, and I really think that having a coach as a resource at the very least can help you just, just keep you moving and keep you motivated. Yeah. Yeah. I think it helps kind of come, uh, overcome like those fears that we all have whenever we go after a goal, you know, and just kind of having a sounding board too is helpful. Yeah. yeah. So leading into that, what made you become a coach? Because when I met you, you were not a coach. <laughs> so what happened? I know. Um, well, as you know, being on, you know, on, on the YouTubes and the social medias that um, you start speaking from a voice of knowledge, from, from that place of knowledge and experience. And that's where I was coming from. And I kind of started feeling like I know enough that I can go in for a coaching certification and have that little piece of credibility sitting underneath. I also know that there's a whole lot that I don't know. Um, I don't know how to build training plans and I would like to help people. I would like to give people resources other than what's already out there if they're looking for something specific. So I, may, I took the plunge um, after, after the Dopey Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been on a high. <laughs> Endorphin high. <laughs> um, it was like two weeks later and and I thought I, you know, this is I'm just gonna go and it was not far from me. It was down in Arizona. I'm living in Denver. Um, so I just took the weekend and sat through the Roadrunners Club of America coaching course and I walked out of there and my head exploded. I it was <laughs> a lot of information. It was death by PowerPoint. But um <laughs> I came out of there with a healthy respect for what coaches do. Yeah. And um, I had a conversation again with one of my fellow coaches that who was in the room, Boston qualifiers, multi, multiple Ironman finishers, you know, all these folks that have so much speed and experience mm. that for me who can firmly hold down that middle of the pack, 50%. Yeah. I am on the 50% time on every <laughs> single race. I think that, there's a whole group of people that are underserved. Yes. And so that's where I felt that I could help this community too and bring that to the YouTube channel and now the podcast and, and all of this stuff. So that's kind of where it's like, it was the next logical step. Yeah. For me. I, I'm actually shocked that you waited so long. Cause I remember when I first met you and I was watching your videos and everything. And I was like, and I, I think I reached out to you and I, I, I don't know what I asked you. Oh, I think I asked you if you, if this was like a hobby or something like that. And you were like, yeah, I just do it for fun or something to that effect. And I was like, why are you not yeah. a coach? Like, <laughs> what's going wrong. on here? <laughs> You're not wrong because I absolutely was like, you know, why, do, why, why am I not doing this yet? I should, really should be doing this. It took, it was actually because again, going back to the novice piece of it, mm -hmm. I struggled and I felt extremely intimidated when I walked into that room because of all of these, you know, super fast, super experienced people uh, that some of them were already coaching in their own right. And I felt extremely out of place. I felt very intimidated uh, to the point where I almost didn't finish. I almost walked mm. out, of the, out of the weekend. And I'm glad I didn't because, um, you know, it, it obviously it's, it's a, I think it's a good fit for me. It feels really good to help people, but it did take so long because I was so intimidated by yeah. who I expected would be in that room. And, and I was right. So yeah, it was just a challenging okay. time. Yeah. Sometimes I think that depending on who the person is mm -hmm. that's coming to you, but I think sometimes if you're too, like, for instance, we'll take the triathlon. Like if you have two many accolades oh sorry if you have too many accolades that like sometimes that's intimidating for someone to actually approach you about information so the fact that you're approachable and like you're saying you know a lot of those people 
are probably going after the ultra marathon people or, you know, the people that are like really serious about yeah. marathons and stuff. Nothing wrong with that. But um, yeah, I definitely think you definitely have a, a niche where like, especially Disney runs. I mean, there's oh, yeah. so many people. Um, I know even me, like the people that I talk to who want to do a 5k, you know, there's all kinds of people that want to do 5ks. And um, a lot of them are not going to go to an ultra marathon person because, why would right. they, you know, they'd right. be more likely to go to you. Right. So if there is anybody out there who is a, a beginner and is curious about this, you can find Heather at YouTube at Heather Jensen. Oh, I said it wrong. Heather Jurgensen. Yep. Jensen popped <laughs> into my head. Um, Instagram <laughs> at coach Heather J and Facebook at, Oh, I almost touched my screen. That's not a touch screen computer. Um, and at Facebook at Runners Without Limits. So, and I'll have all those in the show notes as well. Yes. Yep, absolutely. Okay. All right, Heather. You ready for uh -oh. the speed round? <laughs> oh, thinking on my feet. Okay, let's see what I can do. Okay. <laughs> You're going to love the speed round because I tailored it just for you. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. All right. There's five questions, okay? Hmm. So, first question. What is your favorite Disney race moment? Oh boy. Favorite Disney race moment. I have to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to say, um, when my son finished his first 5k with me in 2015, uh, that was our first Disney race of all time. And that was my son's first 5k. And, uh, at the time he was six and we had a great time. I mean, all of us ran it together and, and he's, it's still like, that's his big thing. Like I want to do five Ks. I want to go back to run Disney. I want, we ran star Wars together last year and oh, awesome. first 10 K well, the second 10 K, but just, you know, running with my son at these Disney races has been an absolute delight. Awesome. And how old is he now? He's 12. I know. Oh, <laughs> I know. Like my youngest just she turned 13 in February and I was like now I have two teenagers <laughs> 15 and 13 yeah um okay so favorite book and why favorite book oh no okay <laughs> uh I have I have a book that I have reread multiple times because I'm a Star Wars fan um, I, would it's would I say it's my favorite book? No. Is it my favorite way to pass the time when I'm out of my runs? Yes. Uh, the book is called Ahsoka and, oh, okay. um, Ahsoka is for Star Wars fans. You know who, who that mm -hmm. is. I mean, she's, uh, absolutely amazing. She's in the new Clone Wars series. Didn't you dress up? Did you have oh, a yeah. costume? Yeah. I think I saw a post. Yeah. Yeah. For that. Yeah. It was pretty good cool costume. The yes. The blue yeah. and yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nerd, nerd right here. Yep. No, <laughs> it's all good. I'm out of it. <laughs> good. All right. So, what is your favorite Disney character? Oh, favorite Disney character. Um, I'm gonna have to go with Rapunzel. Hmm. Queen of Quarantine. You know. That's oh yeah. <laughs> Don't cut your hair. No, exactly. I saw, I saw a meme about that today. <laughs> no, um, I I think Rapunzel uh, as as a movie as a character. Um, the storytelling was really great. I do have some other favorites, but she's probably at the top. List. Yeah. I, I like that movie a lot. That was, a, it was so funny and just, and the music too. It's oh, yeah. just hysterical. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I have next favorite movie and it does, it can be Disney if you want, or it doesn't have to be. <laughs> favorite movie. Um, oh boy. Oh boy. This is, that's tough because it depends on the day. Like, what do I want to watch? <laughs> What do you want to watch uh, I today? Gonna to, I am going to have to stick with Rapunzel with a close second being Moana. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what? I have yet to, I, so I went to Houston, Texas last uh, fall okay. and it was just me. I flew out there by myself and I wasn't feeling good. Like I was coming down with some, like a head cold and um, I turned on the TV and the only thing that was like decent to watch was like Moana. And I watched only like the first hour. And I, I so I still don't know what happened at the end. I'm sure it has a happy ending. <laughs> well, I'm not going to spoil it. it for you. you just yeah. Have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, last one. What is your favorite inspirational quote? Ooh. 
Um, I'm going to get it wrong. Uh, but Bart Yasso, I want to say it's Bart Yasso, uh, has said, if you run, you're a runner. It doesn't matter how fast or how far. Oh, I like that. Um, you are a real runner because I've never met a fake runner. And there is something to be said for that. That it's kind of where we're kind of living right now. It's like, well, I'm not a real runner because I'm slow. And to me, slow mm -hmm. is the four letter word. Um, being a real runner. Well, okay. Do you run? Okay. So it is a real runner, someone who runs marathons. Well, that means Usain Bolt mm -hmm. isn't a runner, right? It's, it's like yeah. what qualifies you as a runner? One thing, if you run, Right. If your feet leave the ground <laughs> in a steady pace, exactly. you're a runner. <laughs> Moving forward at a, you know. That's right. <laughs> fast, you know, a 12 minute mile is just as far as a six minute mile. Yeah. And it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. It certainly doesn't matter to me. And, and that's where I feel like if you run, you're a runner, no such thing as a fake runner. So that that's probably my favorite quote. I had, I yeah. kind of butchered it a little bit, but you can't <laughs> think of it. It's still, it's still effective. <laughs> so if you could give three tips for someone who is new to a Disney run, what would you suggest Ooh. to them? Okay. Um, new to a Disney run, uh, join, uh, some of the Facebook groups that are out there. There's some really good ones that, um, will offer up okay, here's your timeline, registration's opening, um, mm -hmm. here's how you get in. Mm -hmm. So you can ask a lot of questions of experienced run Disney runners in, in those groups. And I think that's a really good place to start because it is a big overwhelming thing. There's a lot of moving parts to yes. registering for a run Disney event. Um, and then on top of that, um, make sure you're trained because especially for those longer distances, the half, the half and the full marathon. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah. They're at Disney, but they're still athletic events and right. you do have to be prepared for them. So you don't get yourself hurt. Right. Um, and I think the third thing would be take it seriously and have fun, have some serious fun. And, and that's really, cause I always approach those races. Like this is still, this is still a race. This is still yeah. an athletic event. Yeah. Um, but I, I take them really slowly, but I also still go in with a plan. Like, okay, I'm just going to keep it easy or whatever, but definitely have some serious fun. Yeah. 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 I know when I did the 10 K there were definitely, because it's in Florida people mm -hmm. like, and if you're from the North, like me, yeah. Like the, Climate is a whole different ballgame there. And you don't know if you're going to be in like, you know, hundred degree humidity type yeah. situation or what's going on. So, but, um, I know for me, I always tell people when they ask me about the Disney run, this is my number one tip, <laughs> go to Goodwill and get some warm clothes that you want to put on you. Because if you're like me, when I did the princess run, you have to get up at three in the morning oh, yeah. and go to wait until it starts. And I'm always cold. So like we put on the Goodwill clothes and as you run, you just shed them and they pick them up and they donate them back to Goodwill. They do. They do a awesome. lot of really great things. So, you know, that's where those Facebook groups come in handy because you can ask all those questions. Like if you had three tips, you'll get hundred people giving mm -hmm. you completely different tips across the whole thing. So that's where so many of us have this kind of addiction to run <laughs> Disney. I think that yeah. it's like we can, and you know, my channel has a lot of, here's how you do this, the read the virtual guides, all of this stuff. There's so much information that you can arm yourself with going into a weekend like that. Yeah. So I think that's just, you know, so many tips. So yeah. Many yeah. So for everybody listening, um, don't get overwhelmed either. If you do go on those Facebook groups, um, I definitely would recommend you head to Heather's sites and check them out first. Um, and then maybe dabble into the Facebook groups because again, you are going to be getting tons of information. And sometimes I know as a new person, you get a little overwhelmed with the amount of information that's given to you and what to pick and what to to not pick. And that's where a coach comes in. So if anybody is interested in starting a run Disney and wants to check out Heather's stuff, Heather, tell them one more time where they can find you. All right. I am on Facebook at runners without limits. I am on YouTube 
Heather Jurgensen. I am on Instagram at Coach Heather J. Those are my three primary places. Uh, the podcast is Runners Without Limits, and we do have a closed Facebook group where we continue the conversation over there. So uh, we've had a really good time in the last year. We're coming up on our one year anniversary of the podcast, which is mm, which is great. Yay. I'm really excited. Awesome. We've had We've had a lot of fun. And if you are confused and, and have wondered where Go Find Your Awesome is was part of that, okay. it's no longer actually an official name. So if you're, <laughs> if you're like, wait, I thought she was Go Find Your Awesome, but it, it, I was. I'm not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just to clarify, Heather used to be Go Find Your Awesome. So if that name comes up and now it is Heather... <laughs> <laughs> Heather, it's it's runners without limits. Runners it's without fine. limits. Okay, <laughs> so you're in the right spot. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> but if you do get lost, like I said, all these um, links will be in the show notes over at shapeitupfitness.com, and you can check them out there. Yep. So thank you, Heather, so much for being on. Um, hopefully, Disney will open soon. Uh, this recording is taking place on um, April 23rd, and Disney is shut down because of the coronavirus. Yeah. <sighs> I know I'm, okay, it's fine. I, I'm it's starting fine. like my husband was doing something like making like bongo noise. And I was like, you gotta stop doing that. I, I'm dreaming of like walking past Disney in the countries, you know, where the kids play the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're um, running and, yeah. yeah. So I'm having like Disney little hot flashes, I guess. I don't little, know little, they... little flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's that. Oh, that smells like the beach club or all. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Mm, beach club's my favorite. <laughs> All right, Heather, thank you so much for being on. And for everybody else, we will, I will talk to you next week. Thank you so much for having me. You are very welcome. Hey, everybody. If you enjoyed this Shape It Up podcast episode, I want to invite you to head over to iTunes. And on the Apple podcast, just click on the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and please leave a review. I can't wait to read what you write. And I will be taking some reviews and possibly reading them on the podcast. So your review might get read. Once you're done your review, head over to shapeitupfitness.com and find out how I can help you lose weight for the last time. <laughs>